real ones, my real ones, my real ones. Run it up with my real ones, run it up with my real ones. Coming up with my real ones, coming up with my real ones. I only fuck with the real ones, real ones, my real ones, my real ones. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Welcome back to the Rap Trap. Um, I'm Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Men Too Movement, and this is part two of um, In Hindsight. If you want to watch the uncut version um, where I went into how this happened, how a nigga could allow the these demons that we call our friends to gas him up, to do something that will cost him his life, you gotta go to the Patreon for it. That video, I went all the way left. I started, you know, fussing at y'all for smoking weed and, and all this shit. I, I just went real deep on that shit. And um, as far as you continuing to do what you've been doing, you're gonna continue to get the same result because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. If, if in, if in, um, if you're if you're trying to be a landscaper, if that's what you know you're trying to go forward in, why why not go like why not put this dope down and start saving your money to buy you something or to to go and and do a consultation with someone who's on their feet with that shit. Your problem is you is your problem ain't money, it's what you spend the money on explaining what the street is on this video we focusing on the rap side of it um go to the patreon and watch that video it's extremely deep um i couldn't finish it because i just started thinking about real life situations uh with with that with that dope shit and how it is stolen the essence of people away from me and me away from my loved ones at times at a time there was a time when i allowed him to snatch me away from my loved ones so um i went up real heavy on there if you want to you know what i'm saying if you need that go watch that on this one we're gonna we're gonna focus on what what happened here and how this in this game how what he just did taking these pills and popping them on camera. This ain't his first time doing it. It was another month. I think it was him. Took another whole bunch of pills and ate them holes. Like, this is a nigga second time doing this shit. These ain't fake pills. These ain't pressed pills. Any real pill popper can tell you these is real fucking pills. Um... The, let's go to the crazy part of this. The third part about this whole thing is this right here, 
as you heard the nigga say, man, turn my song on, bro. My nigga, nobody give a fuck about this nigga music. Nobody give a fuck about nothing, about no nigga music, honestly. Go to Conseco's Rap School and learn about that shit. But you popping enough pills to kill yourself? Oh, niggas is tuned in to that shit. Niggas will watch that shit. Um, you hear him making reference to uh, Lil Baby. And like, man, t t uh, take that song down and put me on that motherfucker, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, crazy shit. Crazy shit. The fame, the notoriety that he'll get from doing this. My nigga, there are going to be people in his inbox. Hey, bro, I'm trying to get a song with you. I'm trying to get it. I'm telling like, this is how the game is set up right now. If people are looking at you, niggas want to do a song with you. Period, point blank. This is the same reason why when Takashi get home, people are going to do music with him. They're trying to advance their career. Nigga don't give a fuck about nothing on nothing. If you have eyes, I need eyes, I'll do a song with you. No matter what. Ain't no uh, integrity in them, a real nigga. Nigga get on the verse and talk about how he a real nigga on the song with Takashi. After, and this shows you, this is why I don't give a fuck when niggas be dying, my nigga. This is why I don't be giving a fuck. Right after we see somebody of, 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 uh, um, of wide popularity, I don't like to say that word because I don't, I don't believe that's what it is, but fuck, I guess that's what it is. We just saw him horse. We just saw him die from the, the exact same thing that you're doing. But if he die, if this dude right here die from popping pills, niggas would be expecting for you to be, oh, man, it's fucked up, bro. R.I.P. Big Bro. R.I.P. Man, it's fucked up. Man, that was a good nigga, bro. Damn, bro. Damn, bro. And he fuck nigga talking shit about my nigga, bro. My nigga was a good nigga, bro. The same nigga who in the back seat. Gassing them up to do it will be the same one trying to go at niggas for talking about how this nigga died. This is, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you that it doesn't make any sense. As you're in the street right now, I have to I have to reference, I have to do it, man. As you're in the street right now, you you can't see that the people that are around you at this very moment that are allowing you to live the lifestyle that you're living, this non-productive lifestyle, these people give so little fucks about you that they'll have money in their pocket and won't give a nickel to your mother to bury you. They won't do anything to help anything. You dead, they out. Hey, bro, your homeboy died in yeah, shit, I told that nigga about popping them pills, bro. I had, you know what I'm saying? You gotta do, you reap what you sow. That's how niggas, it's crazy how niggas do you like that, dog. Like, when you, you know, when you in the shit, whatever, you in the spot, like niggas right there soaking up all the good, you know what I'm saying? All the good vibes. And those people who leave you when you start, you know, hitting these big licks, starting to, you know, going the wrong direction and shit, those people that leave you, those are your real friends. The niggas that start coming around when you start doing that shit are not your fucking friends. You're just co-workers. That's where they work. Now you work there. We're friends now. You will notice that when you come out of that life, if you ever do, while you're alive, they won't come with you. That's their life. So understand, as you're out there and you're doing all this shit that is just conducive to death and failure, those people that are around watching you drink these beers, drink these crackhead beers, smoke blunts, and go to work. Well, I gave, I said some shit in that video that was real fucking, real offensive. 
that Patreon video, I said some shit that was real offensive about niggas staying with their mama, being over 25, and working fast food jobs, and smoking weed, or doing any drug, and fucking bitches. Five signs of a crackhead. Those together, you're a fucking smoker. A smoker you are. If you think it's cool to be living at someone else's house, working a bullshit, broke-ass nigga job, you broke every paycheck. Smoking weed, fucking hoes. What was it? What was it? It was five. Go watch the video so you can see it. But it's it's, it's some side, my nigga. Like, because you're not going to be shit. You're not going to be shit. Nigga, like, niggas don't fucking, you're not going to climb up the fucking ladder and be the fucking general manager. You're not going to be able to pass a drug test. Your lifestyle is conducive of that of a crackhead. Your fucking congregation, your peers are fucking failures. Period. Let's get back and go to um, that. That's how I'm coming. The whole Patreon video. That's all I was on. That's what I'm telling you. Like I, I was just, it, I just blank because the shit is just retarded. But as we look at this shit here, it's crazy that little baby wouldn't look at this nigga off his music because his music. I'm sure his music sound like every fucking other rapper it either has auto-tune or it doesn't have auto-tune you sound like every other little nigga out this bitch the way that you carry yourself the way that you look like it it, it, it proves that you can't be no different yeah, the people you hang around it, it, it proves it you can't be nothing but that but the fact that you come this close to killing yourself, now niggas might look at you. You might actually get signed. If and and understand this, if Bad Baby can have a career and she's known as the Catch Me Outside girl, if fuck that shit, nigga, Cardi B. I don't give a fuck. Cardi B. She was the motherfucker off Instagram saying a retorted prostitute whole shit. You know what I'm saying? You you speak for the fucking scumbag bitches. She fucking came up. The little dude, uh, what is it, Lil Esco. Uh, the little white boy who say, I fuck with you. The little white boy that said, uh, today I got time, cuz. That nigga can be a rapper. Why the fuck couldn't they? Man, it's fucking storming out that bitch, man. Why couldn't they? We haven't heard any of them do any music, but your north, like your numbers are, book game. See, that sound like my fucking car door. So I woke up, I woke up this morning and my fucking floodlight was all on the car. I don't know what kind of storm this year, but that's all you need. This game has proven if you will risk your life, your future, if you don't, if you will be detrimental and be that example that we need as the fucking system, as the, the man. If you'll be that example, we will put you on Front Street. We will give you a platform. They've made it to where, like, just making this gangster, gangster, I want to kill nigga shit. Like, we got everybody will, will say that. Any any of these niggas out here will be the white supremacist, ventri the white supremacist puppet and allow the, um, the Ku Klux Klan to be their ventriloquist. They'll allow... They'll allow the clan to stick their hand up their ass and they'll be the puppet. Ku Klux Klan member says, I hate niggers. J.D. Young <laughs> say, Hold on a second. This, 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 this guy, this the one acting like he got a problem with me or something. That like you got an issue with me, my nigga. Slam my damn screen door like that, nigga. <clears throat> J.D. Young and say, 
I hate these fuck niggas on the clan. And they've made reference to the clan. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to say there's anything more than what it is, but I'm just telling you. Their their core values align with the core values of the fucking white supremacists. Why wouldn't we believe that these fucking label heads, I call them the CIA agents, why wouldn't we believe that they are one and the fucking same? How these rappers aren't hurting any fucking, they're not hurting anyone but the people that the Klan and the white supremacists won't hurt. Who, who in the fuck does a young black boy Popping multiple fucking Percocets. Who does that hurt? Who does that hurt? Does that hurt the clan? Does that hurt anyone but him and his family? Does that influence anyone but him and his... You might have a few fucking, you know... Um... Uh, uh, um collateral damage, little white kids, whatever fuck like that. Even though the shit came from them. But when it when it goes over there, they have all kind of treatment plans and and uh, this is a crisis and all this shit like this. But over here, it's perfect. This is what we wanted to land. It's no different than the fucking cocaine. It was supposed to cripple, destabilize, crush. It's supposed to be a generational curse that they put on top of us. It wasn't supposed to spill over, but that's what war is. That's what, you know, weapons of mass destruction do. All you can do is just tell all, make sure none of your people are anywhere near there. But you do have to plan for, you know, maybe somebody with uh, radiation poison comes in contact with somebody that you may not want to be affected. And that's what happened. So now I'm just I'm just thinking with you. That's, I'm just thinking with you. I'm sitting down thinking with you. With situations like this, and we see this is why I had to do this video, and that's why I had to take the other video when I talked about the shit that you already know in your heart. I had to put that somewhere else because I need to speak to you about this, about the rap game. I need for you to see shit like this. This is the same thing that we saw with all those other people. All those other people that are examples that will be the example that the, uh, what is Tyreek calling the um, dominant society? I'll say white supremacists. The example that they want us to be, they'll put them in front of us. And not only put them in front of us, they'll put them in front of us as successful. This is why I tell you rappers on Conseco's Rap School on the Stupid Rapper channel, I tell y'all about listening to these niggas in their interview when they say, uh, you know, I just started rapping yesterday, bro. You know, I just speak from the heart, my nigga. I don't even go in. Do you know that you lame now if you write? If you write your music down, like, if you don't come in the studio and just be trash as fuck and freestyle, then you lame now. Writing music before you get to the studio, which is fucking um, not cost efficient at all. Like nigga, most of you niggas are working on a budget. Studio time costs at, let's say average $30 an hour. You got time to go in this bitch and just fuck up this many times? But you don't care what the fuck you say because listen to the music nowadays, what the fuck are they saying? To care about your music is also lame. Um, but but you look at it though, it only works here. That's why I tell you this is the trash culture. This doesn't work anywhere else. See when Lil Nas X tried to get in the country, no, 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 we got standards over here. Rock, no, you can't even play an instrument. No, that's not what it takes time and talent. You should probably go be a rapper. Where all you got to do is just say shit and, and put a beat behind it. All their trash comes right here. Iggy Azalea. Fucking, um, 
MGK, Yellow Wolf. I'll say Yellow Wolf now because Yellow Wolf just came out with as races, so I'll say him. And you can't get Post Malone. If you're a white, if you're a musician in a rock band, a country band, and fucking they won't let you in, just come be a rapper. They'll accept you. Open arms. You don't have to say a fucking thing. You don't have to. It's, it's all good. Just, just go over there. I don't know. Just for, oh man, he all and 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 it just like we're monkeys. Oh, look at he all he got down. Oh yeah, yeah. Riff Raff. I always felt like he uh, was a caricature before Lord Jamal said it on uh, Vlad TV. I felt like he was laughing at motherfuckers. Like this is, dog. It's it's dog. It's rap songs, man. It's rap songs. Well, motherfuckers are, I'm sure they're purposely being garbage. I'm sure of it. They're purposely being trash. And the song streams amazing because there is a, there's a, um, there's a culture for that. There's a niche audience that likes to hear people make fun of rap. There is a niche audience that loves to hear white people, uh, Panamanian people, Asian, just different cultures of people. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, fuck, I'm a fucking nigger, and look at this, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> and it, it bothers me because we, as a whole, aren't smart enough to even see that they're making fun of us. You'll, you'll damn near do a song with one of you motherfuckers. Because they got the numbers. The motherfuckers that make fun of rap, their numbers, and the motherfucker who actually is trying to get on has to go and actually do a finesse two times. Be Rallo. Go do eight years. Yeah, you know I just did eight years, you know, for this shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm a real nigga though, my nigga shit, you know. It real around this bitch. That's it's just if we can't see at this point that we're being pushed to lose our freedom, lose our life, lose our family over this music thing. As soon as you enter this arena, you immediately have to fight niggas. As soon as you get your foot in position, there's someone right here for you to fight. And we, as the, the crowd, look down and, and, oh, well, whoever wins this battle, I guess I'm going to buy their music or not even buy their music. I, I guess I'm going to listen to him more than the other one. Oh, uh, you a bitch. You out the game. I.E. Young L.A. Fight. There is no just come in this motherfucker and do your thing. No. We have to truly fight, and it's the African Americans that have to do that. But all these other races, they come in the game and go straight to the top. With no kind of, they just do just good music. What they call good music. No beef, no problems. We got to prove that we still ready to go to prison. And no one feels like that's kind of, you have to pop 13 pills, 15 pills on camera for people to pay attention to you. Mark my words. This is no different than when MLE Chopper came out and they were laughing at him doing that fucking dance in the studio of fucking Birdman. They were laughing at that lame ass Crazy fucking whatever the fuck he was doing. What happened? Nigga became the damn near the biggest thing in fucking music. This game is turning into a joke, and the only people seems like who don't see that it's a joke is us. We're the only people that's dying and going to prison for music. Do you know how many people? Had no jail record until they started doing music. Rush up, rush up, rush up, rush up. 
And I think the biggest problem is, because y'all understand I'm doing a rap trap documentary. This is the bread and butter. This is what we're pushing to Netflix. And there's gonna be a lot of pushback because this is not what the golf course theory, all these things is not what needs to be put out for them. In order for this thing to keep pushing like this, this shit can't be brought to the forefront like this. But in order to substantiate what it is I'm saying, I do need for some people who have been through it. Some people, I would, do you know what it would do for this project if a rapper like, obviously Lil Baby, but Q, uh, uh, the um, C.O.P., Coach K, um, of course Puff Daddy won't do it because he's getting rich off of it, and, and neither will P, because they're getting rich off of it. But if we had artists that were actually popping to say, this is what happened, bam. Right now, Rich the Kid, his management is suing him, but that's, that's some business shit, whatever, but and that's and I, I really don't know what side of that I'm on because nigga, if I if I push you to this point and get you right here, nigga, the money that you make is supposed to be split before you even touch anything. It's supposed to be split, my nigga, because if it wasn't for me, you would be that same nigga in my inbox talking about can you listen to my music? You were nobody before I met you. It wasn't your music that got you on. It was my resources, and I, that's a whole nother conversation. Get to Canseco's rap school so you can learn about that. But for somebody just to say, like, you know, like, they wanted me. But we have that. We have people who came out and said they wanted this. This is what they wanted. This is what I came with this. You know, Afro Man. I did. I got high. I get high because I got high. And then I wanted to do a gospel. <laughs> he wanted to do a gospel project and they dropped him. Of course they're going to drop. This is a, this is a. This is the game, and maybe is that something that we just have to understand and realize that this is a game of, you know, Satan? Like, if you want to do positive shit, go somewhere else. But then what do you say about the Kendrick, the J. Cole, and, and you know, people like that? Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. But as we're pushing forward, as we're pushing forward, what I need for you to understand is that there are doors in this industry. This bottom door, which is the easiest door to get in, this is the trap door. This is the Gucci, Rallo, nigga, um, OMB Peasy, NBA Youngboy, Kodak Black, Rallo Rodriguez. This is where you're probably gonna get tried when you go to the club. You gotta fight for this. Like you gonna, your life is on the line at all times. At any, like at any moment, we won't be surprised to hear that you got killed or robbed. Then the next door is the lyrical door. Now this door is harder to get in because for one, people don't wanna hear lyrics. They don't wanna hear that shit, you know what I'm saying? So. It's there, but you know, you got a lot of different doors you got to get through. The quickest way, see, all these doors go to success. Maybe I should draw, I'm a, maybe if I can remember, I'm gonna draw it on the screen. So it's the trap door, lyrical door, and the pop door. The pop door is G Easy. Um, what, what's the dude name? Uh, I'm gonna pop, Macklemore. I'm gonna pop some tag. That shit right there. Um, a nigga's not really gonna come through that door like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, as popish as you may be, it's not gonna happen like that. Like, they're gonna try to push you somewhere else. That'll be Chance the Rapper, uh, Childish Gambino type shit. Um, but all three of these doors are trying to get to success. These are the doors to success. The trap door is a quicker path but it's a lot more obstacles lyrical door it's far longer far longer um 
It has obstacles, but not the, those type of obstacles. These are obstacles that are gonna kill you in real life. These obstacles are just some shit that's gonna fuck up your career and shit like that. The trap door, that you can lose your life in that motherfucker. And then this pop door, it's pretty much just like they have to choose you. And that's where you have the gatekeepers right here. If you're not, it gives there you. Post, uh, Post Malone, these type of people, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, you know, they're not going to receive Machine Gun Kelly. That's different too. But you got to be white to go up this door. But they, we understand that the trap door, the trap door is where we're going. Trap shit. But with that, it just comes everything that we've seen. And motherfuckers try to get through this trap door faster by, see, I'm crazy, nigga. I kill myself on pills. I kill myself. I'm crazy. This is why you're seeing this shit that you're seeing, the shit that makes no sense. We're going to record ourselves shooting. We're going to record ourselves robbing because we're trying to start our rap career. We're not doing this because we gangster. We're doing it because we're trying to start our rap career. We see like everybody else see that when you do this shit and everybody see it, it might go viral. Shit, this gonna, this gonna make me pop. And the sad part about it is that shit right there can very easily, nigga, now people see you. People see you now. This shit went viral on Facebook and shit. Like, I'm like, you can't be serious. And this ain't his first time doing it. So nigga had to actually build a fan base for suicide. I guess the sad part about it is, is that you can really garner an audience fast by threatening suicide. Way faster than you would for making music. So let's talk about solutions. Let's talk about solutions. I don't like talking about a problem without solutions. I feel um, that we have to step back from this game. Um, I've already spoken about, you know, next time somebody get shot by the police or some bullshit happen with the police, um, I don't, I don't have no emotions toward the shit because I've been said, let's get the fuck out the street come back to the table and see what the fuck we need to do to fix this. Nobody want to stop. Nobody, everybody want to just keep going like ain't nothing wrong. We just seen a motherfucker got killed in their own house two times. We don't feel like we might need to come to the table as one. Nigga, we ain't talked. We haven't talked to each other. We haven't spoken to each other and said, look, man, we need to start Showing that we're united. It's not taking place. And that's what I believe the system depends on, is us remaining divided. Now, as far as this rap thing, dog, these artists, y'all artists that are in the industry but not in the industry, you know what the fuck is going on. You know what the fuck is happening. Like, but... Everybody's so thirsty for success. It's like, fuck that shit. This gonna get me ahead. You know that, you know, you've been told in one of those back rooms that you need to show the, show the public that you, that you a man, that you ain't scared. People, public perception is that you're, you're soft. So you went in clubs and, and started fights or, or maybe you got the label to send somebody in for y'all to fight or some shit like that. Stage the situation. This whole, everything that we see on our phone now, or everything that we see, that we're not actually there, we need to think first as if it's staged. I don't give a fuck what it is. If it's on TV, if it's on the phone, we need to think that it's fake. It was staged somehow. That's just the way I think. Every time I see something, the first thing I look for is, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, it that ain't real. They stage that shit. And I, I come from that viewpoint first, 
and then I come from the real viewpoint. And from from a real viewpoint. Then I come from actually I come from that viewpoint first. If it doesn't work in that viewpoint, then I'll think different. But if it works with that formula, that's what the fuck it is. I believe that the industry saw the success of reality television and they went from there and said to themselves, why the fuck do we need to shoot anything? Real. Why don't we just do this? It's cheaper to shoot. It's getting better ratings. Fuck it. They know it's fake and they still watch it. We won't tell them if they don't want to know. Everything is orchestrated. You know, when it was a movie came out when we were younger called Blair Witch, the Blair Witch Project. And it was the first to, to I, I never saw a movie shot like this in my life. It was just from a fucking camera, a, hell, a handheld camera view. Uh, and then we saw it again. What was the second time we saw the hell hand? Uh, paranormal activity. That was the scariest movie. Was, the first paranormal activity was the scariest movie I ever seen in my life. I think something later on surpassed that. But at that time, I walked out the movie theater. I walked out the movie theater. I was with a girl. I think um, I that, that was kind of crazy with her too. Never found out about that. But, um, quiet down. But it showed. It showed that you didn't have to have an ultra big budget to bring people in. To me, that's that's what I saw. And then with with the with the resurgence or, or, or with the evolution of reality TV because like I told y'all to me uh maybe they had something like this with like Survivor Island but I think Survivor Island came after the real world and road rules that realness and what's realer than like real life like the fuck Love and hip, like I, it, it, it's, it's too deep. It's too deep, man. It's, it's it's too fucking deep. Cause I'm trying to tell you that everything is fake. And 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 to tell you that shit, you know, it's turning you to a fucking hermit. Um, but as far as this rap shit go, whenever we see shit like this, whenever shit like this is praised, I, I'm telling you, if you go to this motherfucker page. Motherfuckers is fucking with them. You got motherfuckers in the inbox. Boy, I pop just like you, boy. You do it just like me, boy. Well, you turned, why you turned up in that motherfucker, head, boy? Happy birthday, my nigga. Like, you know, that's where we at. And I believe a lot of that shit, when you get motherfuckers online praising you for doing shit like that, I believe a lot of that is the fucking feds. I believe this act, this this these actions, this behavior is uplifted and celebrated because it seems as if everybody's celebrating it. But these motherfuckers created bots. They created the fucking view bots and the like bots. You know, where you can like someone one time and it looked like it's a like a thousand times. You know, they, they got comment bots. You know, that's how you can tell when somebody got bought their fucking uh, comments. Great video. Hey, this is great content. When you're coming out with another video, love the video, man. You go to that profile, there's somebody in fucking China. Hackers can do it. It's, it's possible. That's it. It's possible. From that point forward, we have to say... What's real and what isn't? Juice World just died. Nigga pop 15 pills. And next thing you're gonna see with this motherfucker, 
is niggas on the song with them, you know, big numbers on this shit, you know what I'm saying, motherfucker, fuck. Because, nigga, you listen to these nigga music, and it's like, everybody saying, real trap, nigga, boy, I sold it out the bell. Yeah, like, everybody saying the same shit. You don't have to be able to rap, you don't have to be able to do anything in the studio, it's just your realness is making your song live. And this shit been going on since the Gotti days. Nigga, since the beginning of Gotti. We believe Gotti was a real, like, nigga, the nigga with like, the, you know, like a little bit of butter, nigga with the ounces. If you, and, and from that time forth, nigga, if you got that name in your city, like, you know, Shawty Low, you know, like, if you got that name to where you really had dope, like, nigga, you can start your fucking career. Niggas kind of felt that way about Dolph. Then it came out that he was a ball man shit, but it was too late because he was already on. But if you come with that, you know, Rick Paul's, we find out what he, you know, you come with that essence of, of you know, really being a trapper, a nigga with respect. Then niggas is fuck it. You won't give a fuck how trash you is. Dolph <laughs> plies. Man, that, that that ain't proof of that shit. But that's what I'm saying is once that becomes the standard, you can get anybody in the game. And talent was what our shit was. Rap is our shit. We need our shit to have a fucking standard. I don't know why that's so hard to understand. Look what's happened to us since talent has been ripped out of what we hold a, a, a fucking artist up to. Like, well, you don't have to be able to... It's, ah, come on, man. We saying the same shit, man. It is what it is. Um, just watch. I, I I did this. I did this video as a um a, a, a timestamp. Watch going forward. I want you to watch. Watch what happens if something isn't done at this point. Watch how it evolves. Killing yourself. Remember I told y'all about rappers being signed after they die? Mothers signing their dead sons to a record label. Pay attention. Just pay attention. Been a rap trap. Make sure you go to the Patreon to see the real version. Um... Go to the PayPal. I appreciate everybody who's been showing love and shit like that on the PayPal. Um, shout out to whoever the comment of the day was. Um, shout out to you. Um, make sure you go to the Cash App and show love. Y'all remember we do have the uh, 4 for 40 deal going on with the merchandise. Um, go to the inbox for more information uh, with that shit. I see y'all in a minute. Love, love.